Now, what we're getting ready to talk about is how to overcome the sinful desires of the flesh. And the way it's simple. It ain't even really complicated like that. Live in the spirit. And I said, God, I was talking to them yesterday in the salon. I said, God, a lot of people be like, well, it's hard to be saved. It's hard to do that. It's hard to do this and that. But when I begin to study the word of God, it's not. You have to basically set your life up as if you really want this thing. When you begin to see that it's a choice between life and death, the flesh and the spirit, the choice is already made. Either you want to choose life or choose death. You know, and, and I said, God, how do I do that? And he said, begin as you walk. Acknowledge me in all your ways, and, and I shall direct your path. Then he began to say, choose the spirit. Like, say, for instance, I w- I'm going to be real with you. I was going online last night studying this, this, this Bible study I was talking, and I was reading on sexual immorality. And because of different things I've struggled with in my past, I had to be cautious with even putting the word sexual in the computer because I didn't want to go back where I came. That's just how I'm serious about this. You know what I mean? So so anything that I do now, I have to set my atmosphere and make it conducive not to remind me for where I came and where I'm not trying to go back. You're not going to sit there and play with fire if you know that's a struggle of yours. So that's how you walk in the spirit. You make decisions based on the Bible and what would Jesus do in this situation. Now when I'm in my car, I can't handle Trey songs this season. I can't handle R. Kelly. I can't because next thing you know, I'll be slipping up or something. This is serious. I, when we begin to look at our life as a state, you know what I mean, and take our life serious and take the things of God serious again, that's when we will begin to experience that life of blessing that we don't have room enough to receive. That's when God can open up the window of heaven and pour you out a blessing you ain't got room enough to see because you're walking in the spirit. Whenever you're walking in the spirit, you don't be heavy. You don't be bound. You don't be dealing with spirits jumping off the wall, can't figure out why is everything confusing because God is with you then. When you're walking in the flesh, that's when everything is chaotic. That's when everything is in disarray and you don't know whether you're going or coming. It's because part of you is in the spirit and part of you is in the world. It's time to make a decision. And I'm like, God, it's really time out for the craziness. Either we're going to do it for real or we not. So Galatians 5, chapter 16 says, So I say, live by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. And what I took from that is, if you live by the spirit, your desires are going to change. You ain't going to be feeding yourself spiritual food and think you're going to be able to operate in the flesh. You're going to be nauseated. Chapter um, number 17. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the spirit. And the spirit, what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other. So that so that you do not do what you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Number 19. The acts of the sinful nature are obvious. These are the acts of the sinful nature. Help us Holy Ghost up in this piece. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissension, factions, and envy and drunkenness. Lord, have mercy. Those are the 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 nature of the sinful nature okay lord help us hold on one second help us god jesus god i love you today god i love you today i thank you let's just begin to thank and praise god for a second chance to get it right thank you lord you're worthy to be praised god we magnify your name We praise your name, God. You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for a chance to get it right. Woo, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. We magnify you, Jesus. We magnify you. 
um, my bad. Woo. <coughs> Y'all have anything to add or to say while I'm finding the lotion? <coughs> Questions, comments, or concerns? You have anything, John? <coughs> Again, I want to thank y'all for coming out. Um, here we go. Okay. In Galatians. Um, in this book that 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 I'm reading from, which is the New Believers Bible, is the first steps to a new Christian. Ain't nothing wrong with going back to the basics. Can I can I get a witness? Yeah. I'm serious because a lot of times we try to fix stuff that ain't broke. If we just do the first thing God told us, you know, and 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 I I'm so sensitive right now and could cry because. A lot of the things we do, we know better. Oh. Uh, that's why I'm like, God, I'm sorry. When I when I see things that aren't lining up and that ain't coming together, we gotta ask ourselves, is that a seed that I sowed? Am I reaping? Yes. Ma. Okay. <laughs> But that's what I'm saying. You have to go through extra stuff that could have been avoided if you would just obey. That, like I said in the beginning of the Bible study, how can we say he's Lord, Lord, and don't do what he tells us to do? Luke 4 and 46. I mean, Luke 6 and 46. I'm sorry. How can we say, Lord, I'm saved. Lord, I love you. And you don't do what he say. It ain't even that hard. He's basically just saying, obey, obey. Uh, the Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. If we begin to walk out the word, we will begin to experience the signs and wonders and miracles that Jesus said that we would do greater works. But a lot of us ain't willing, ain't willing to sacrifice and deny our flesh. I'm going to go over why Christians need the Holy Spirit, and then we're going to close this out in prayer. This text that I'm about to read from Galatians 5, 16 through 26 lays out four important reasons we need to let the Holy Spirit have full control of our lives as believers. The whole, Number one, the Holy Spirit helps to conquer our sin nature. The Holy Spirit will help us make the right decisions if we listen to his advice. Lord, have mercy, God. Mm, 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 mm. If we hadn't had the Holy Spirit, it's time to get him now. Because we're so, like I know me in the time, in the past, have had situations where I've been stuck in making a decision. Ain't no stuckness when you letting God, the Holy Spirit orchestrate your decisions and let him orchestrate your life. And when you're seeking him first and he's directing your path. But a lot of times we're not seeking him. We're seeking people. We're seeking things. We're seeking TV. We're seeking horoscopes. But we're not going to God. And wonder why we end up with crazy results. We will begin to seek him. He is his word. We will begin to pray. And make our request known with thanksgiving. Then we will get the results that we desire. It's like we're making a mockery of God because we're saying we're saved and we're doing things like the world. What? It's time, it's time to get it together. Lord, how much do it? Number two, the Holy Spirit makes it easier to follow God's guidelines. The Holy Spirit gives us the power to live by God's guidelines. If we listen to and follow the Holy Spirit's promptings, then we won't have to force ourselves to obey God. 
That is because we will want to obey him. Number three, the Holy Spirit will produce godly qualities in our life. When we live by the Holy Spirit, he develops godly qualities known as the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. There we go. Who there it is. The reason why we're producing the opposite of the fruits of the Spirit is because the Holy Spirit ain't present. It's the flesh. It's hard to love people. It's hard to walk in meekness with the strength under subjection. It's hard to have patience, long-suffering, kindness, endurance, goodness, peace, faith, all that stuff. It's hard to do that when God is not present on the inside of you. We're trying to walk in love and be patient, and the Holy Spirit ain't even present. So we're trying to do it in ourselves. That's why we keep failing, because we're trying to do it through us instead of through him. That's why it's so important, God, I invite you in today, into this vessel. I surrender all. I just want to be in your will, God, because I know when I do that, he will lead and guide me and will make this way easy and not hard. It won't be a struggle to live right. It won't be a struggle to stay out the bed and off your back because you're going to be conscious and aware that the Holy Spirit is pregnant on the inside and you don't want to do nothing to grieve the Spirit. Amen? Amen. Last but not least, the Holy Spirit encourages us to seek God's approval above man. We will seek God's glory above our own when we follow the Holy Spirit's leading. In essence, the Holy Spirit enables Christians to live lives that are pleasing to God, something that is impossible to do on our own. Impossible to do on our own. That's why one week we, do, we live in right and the next week we ain't, because we're trying to do it. That's like trying to kick a habit in your own strength. You got to recognize first that there's a problem, but we got to also recognize that there's a higher power that can help you overcome anything. But the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ, not through Toya, not through Faith, not through John, but through Christ, which strengthens me. We're trying to do things through ourselves and through our flesh instead of getting on our knees in prayer and in worship to God, inviting him in and allowing him to work it out through us. We, it says his yoke is easy, his burden is light. The way you relieve that spirit of heaviness and that spirit of you don't feel like you can make it or get up is to put on the garment of praise. The garment of praise relieves spirit of heaviness. And what that is, I'll never forget that time, and then I'm closing. That time when I had went through a situation of having my son and had to move into the, the um, apartment in, in Burlington. And I knew that wasn't going to be my place to reside forever because I wasn't going to get comfortable there. But the way I came out of that, because it was like the devil was literally sitting on my lap and I couldn't even lift a leg in praise and stuff. But I begin to decree out of my mouth, I will not be another statistic. I'm coming out of this. My story won't end like this. I repeated it over and over again. And I got in between two chairs. I'll never forget because I couldn't shout. You know I'm a dancer. But I was so weighed down by life and just by the cares of the world and all this craziness. I put my hands on those chairs and I started rocking back and forth. I said, I'm coming out of this. I'm coming out of this. Three months later, I was moving out the apartment. A year later, I was moving to a brand new house. The next year, I owned my own salon. You can't tell me God ain't bad all by himself. But I spoke it out of my mouth, and I believed it in my heart, and I invited him in. And that's my testimony. Glory be to God. Thank you for coming. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God.